Hello coaches, welcome back to another MSC Breakdown. This week we're going to talk about pressing, but it's not a shape or a training session. Today we're going to talk about the process of implementing a pressing system and maximizing it throughout the season with your team. You may change the shape, you may change the personnel, but the principles will be consistent and the processes will be consistent. A lot of the time you hear trust the process, trust the process. Well, today we're gonna to look at what that process can be and maybe some little ideas around different aspects of the process that can overlook the times. A lot of this is taken from the MSC Press and Book. If you enjoy the work here and you wanna check out the book, we'll do a special offer. If you order the book right away, I will send you a copy of the MSC Scan and Training Sessions for absolutely free. We're only going to do it for the first 50 books sold. So if you enjoy it, take advantage of that offer. If you want to order the Kindle one, and the links are below, and you want to order the Kindle one, just shoot me an email, gary at modernsoccercoach.com, with a confirmation email about the order, and I will send you the scanning book for free as well. So a lot of this is from the press and book. We're gonna look at three aspects, again, that I feel are overlooked with press, and sometimes it's about, is it 442, is it 433? Today we're gonna to challenge that. It has to be about way more than all of that. It has to be about the process, and it has to be about the day-to-day -day work on the trading patch. So now we're gonna look at how we impact that. All right, so the first area we're gonna look at is positional profiles. Now you hear it quite often, we don't have the players to press or we lack this here from a player personnel standpoint to press. I think you can work on press in situations and I actually think they should be part of the process of a little bit of extra work. We see a lot of additional work after training session around technical aspects. But I think from a defensive standpoint, you can actually add a lot of value to your pressing system if you implement and design pressing specific exercises to do with your team. Here's an example of one of those. This would be an attacker, a number 11, who goes to press, a uh, fullback, number two, and a center back. And quite often there's three things that might happen. So on the coach's signal, the blue player, which is the wide forward, gets released. And you're just teaching them to turn it into a 1v1. And is that ball winnable down the line and stop them from scoring in the goal? Sounds simple, but again, a lot of 1v1 situations in a pressing system can define whether it's successful or not. Another aspect of the exercise, again, they're passing back and forth on the coach's signal. The wide forward goes. If it's a give and go, can they stop and prevent the goal if it's a give and go scenario? You see Bielsa do a lot of this defensively, stopping, learning how to deal with 1v2s, learning how to deal with give and goes. Because, and this last example is something that can happen if the wide forward isn't completely confident and clear on what the system requires. If that player is released and goes and presses and then is reluctant, then that 1v2 can develop and can quite simply end up progressing the ball down the pitch. So working on those from a positional standpoint, in the book we look at every position and different ideas on how to build sessions around those positions and be as detailed as we can with the pictures. Okay, the next aspect of working in a process of a pressing system is the details. Although it sounds great, it's not really enough to say the system against the system and expecting players to go out and implement it at a really high level. An example of this here is a 4-3-3 against a 4-3-3. In this picture, you can see here, both teams are presenting each other with the same picture. The red team is giving up a 1v2 with the two blue centre-backs and is matching the 3v3 in midfield. And the 7-11s that we're going to focus on are taking care of the fallbacks in the 2 and the 3. Now, a lot of coaches would look at that and say, yeah, I'm happy enough with that. But if you get into the detail and you start looking at this in the context of the game, this picture can present one or two challenges. And here's why. So you can see on this pitch side animation, the blue centre-back drops short. And the wide forward and the 9 and the 10 and the 8 are all 
marking players and they're giving up that pass into the forward. Now they've broken pressure and the blue team can create a shot on goal. They bypass five or six red players with a central pass. So that detail around marking, rather than having players stand beside other players, there's a great quote from Guardiola that's in the Modern Soccer Coach book that you can get in the link below. Don't mark a player. Cover the space between two players. The opponent thinks they are unmarked, making pressing easier. So if you want to trigger a press, you have to almost invite the pass to a number two or a number three or even a number six potentially and then apply really aggressive pressure. This is a picture from Liverpool in pre-season. You can see all the players are more of a zonal structure. The midfielders are covering those central channels, of course, but so are the two Liverpool wide forwards. They are covering the central channels and defending from out to in so that if a ball is played to a fallback, they can aggressively press. Of course, they've got to go at the right time, and they've got to time that right, and we'll get to that in a second. And the third and final part of the process of getting a really effective pressing system is the work done through Monday to Friday, and does that align with the philosophy and the intensity required to press? Now, again, it's very, very simple to paint pressing pictures from a standstill point of view is that going to be the game potentially not so when you go back to that picture before in Liverpool how do you teach players to get that timing right to maybe block central channels and then maybe get out and press at a really aggressive level we look at that in the book in the pressing book on the link below this is an exercise from the book an 11 v 11 game the blue team are set up in a traditional 4-3-3. The red team are going to press in a 4-4-2. And they're giving up an overload. And they're also having to be careful of those central channels. So we're going to start our 7-11s from out to in. Similar to the Liverpool picture. And those white channels in white, the shaded ones in white, they're not allowed to go there until the ball is on the way. So they can get the timing right. As soon as that ball is going there, you can release your 7-11s into that zone. If they win it in that zone, it's a point. If they win it and score in the transition, it's three points. So really incentivizing the 7-11 to be aggressive and working on that timing in getting out there and applying pressure to the 2-3. and three. Really good training exercise to try and paint the picture. So there you have it folks, just some ideas taken from the MSC press and book on the link below. Again, if you want to order that book, the next 50 orders we will give a free MSC scanning book, ebook with it. So as soon as you order a physical copy of the book, we will send you one of the ebooks on the scanning sessions as well. Really, really good deal. Yeah, overall, I think press and when you're looking at it, uh, in today's analysis, of course, at the top level, you're going to get the analysis of shape against shape, system versus system. But in reality, to get that system at a level that it's got to be operating at, where one mistake can cost the team a goal at the highest level, the level of detail that needed to work at that level is extremely high. So to get that detail, I think you've got to work on the player profile, you've got to work on positional exercises that align to the detail and the roles and responsibilities around the press and system. And then the detail around that from an 11 the 11 perspective, distances, again, roles, responsibilities, but allowing players to be confident in exactly what they're doing and exactly what everyone else is doing. And then finally, it's replicating that on the training pitch you know, making sure that when they get there that the warm-up is aligned with the next exercise that's aligned with the next exercise. It's not just a defensive day. So you want to be consistent in those moments with the game model identity of the press and shape as well. I think it's really, really important. So hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a like. Please give a subscribe below. Really appreciate all the support of the Modern Soccer Coach YouTube page. We're almost at 20,000. That was a goal 12 months ago. So if you haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe and we'll keep the content coming. And then the last thing, don't forget to check out the link below for the 
MSC Press and Book. You can order the physical copy on the link below. And we've also got a link to the Kindle copy. Again, if you want the scanning book as well and you order a Kindle copy, just shoot me an email, gary at modernsoccercoach.com and I will send that to you if you send me a copy of your Kindle confirmation. Thank you so much for the support. I will see you next week. Goodbye. 